Amen. Thank you, Gospel Choir. We come into this house to worship him, to worship Christ our Lord. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. It is good to have you in this house of God. And we offer a special welcome to the Blanchard family and friends who are here to celebrate Emma's baptism today. This will be a joyous day and, and a wonderful day in the life of this family, in the life of our congregation. So welcome to worship today. Let us worship him. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> Before I do the call to worship, one more announcement that I was asked to make. The flowers on the altar today are in honor of Trika Young by her secret sister. We are called by God, drawn to the water, sprinkled with love, forever. We are loved by God, never forgot treated and honored as precious. We are sent by God to be the cherish the young, lift up the fallen, Let us, let us pray. Let us come before God in prayer. Oh God, as we gathered this day, we come in thanksgiving and in praise. We come thanking you just for this day and for the breath that we took this morning that woke us up. We thank you for bringing us here to this place to gather in community. We thank you for opportunities to worship you and to praise your name. We thank you for the love that is shared in Jesus Christ so that we might find wholeness and salvation and new life. We thank you for this fellowship of faith, a fellowship of people who uh, are drawn together by your spirit and who reach out to serve in this world. We thank you for the generosity of our members as they share time, talent, and treasure for the continuing ministry of Christ. Continue, O oh God, to speak to our hearts and to our lives and help us as we pray to open our hearts, our lives, and our whole selves to you. We come today in joy and celebration. We thank you for Felicia and Jesse and the new life that is growing with them. And we pray that, uh, that Felicia will remain healthy and that, uh, that the baby will be born whole and healthy and uh and we know they're that that child is coming into loving a loving household we give thanks for the ministry of salem united methodist church 175 years of serving in their community we thank you oh god for emma and the life that she is uh has is entering into this day a life walking by your side and for parents and family members and uh, friends who will help her along that journey. 
to reveal your love and grace to her. We thank you for those who are celebrating birthdays for Naomi and for Trika, and we pray you would continue to bless their lives and hold them close to you and guide them along the way. Help them to be the people you need them to be in this world. For, <clears throat> for those who are traveling, for those who have traveled this day and will be traveling in days to come, we ask you to be with them and guide their journeys. Be with Rebecca. We thank you for Trika's brother who has traveled to Germany, and we pray for the Jones, Jones family as they go to New Orleans to lay their mom to rest. We thank you for Olga and her life and for the way she touched her family and, and her friends. We thank you that her suffering is over and that she has been welcomed into your eternal embrace. But for those who remain in this life, oh God, bring them your comfort and your peace as they remember Olga and all that she did with and for them. We lift up to you all of those who need healing and wholeness in this time of their lives. We pray for the Massey family, that you might discern what is, what is going on uh, with one member of the family. We pray for Sarah and her family, for Diane's neighbor suffering through long COVID, for Pat as uh, he faces a cancer, uh, cancer treatment and radiation, for Wendy and for Jeff as they continue to heal from their surgeries. We place them all into your hands, O oh God, for you are the great physician. So bring healing and wholeness to bodies, to minds, to hearts. We place ourselves into your care as well, dear God. Walk with us through the rest of this service and speak to us in, in the scriptures. And as the word is proclaimed and as the word is enacted before us and as the word is, uh, leads us out into your world to serve your people. All of these prayers we lift up in joy and in celebration in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. I'm reading from Luke 18, verses 9 to 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like the other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. I'd like to invite any children that would like to this morning to come forward with me and as the children are coming, uh, for those who are visiting, if you have little ones, there is a nursery down this hallway here to the right. If you would like to take them, you're welcome to. And after Emma's baptism this morning, you guys can have a seat. Um, there will be a time for Sunday school for any children that would like to go to Sunday school as well. So I do need some help this morning for those that 
are here. I have some items that I need you to open. And when you open it, come put it right here in front of this bowl and this table, okay? So, Susanna, this is Emma's baptism today, so I'm going to let you go first. Is that okay? And then we'll go around. So I'm going to hand you one and open it up. I'm going to hand the, these out. Open them up for us. And then I'm going to let you speak into the microphone when it's your turn to tell people what it is. You can rip the paper. You've got yours open. You want to tell, hold it up so people can see it. It's a sponge. It's a sponge. All right, Liv, would you like to open one up and tell us what it is too? Great. Somebody else have theirs open? Noah, what do you have? It's soap. A bar of soap. Okay. Mamie, what do you have? It's Paper. Some toilet paper. Okay, what do you have? A cup. Okay. Liv, still working on it? You need some help? You need some help to open it? Bring it. Grace, could you help her open it? Okay, you want to open another one? Open that one up. All right, once you've opened your item, come put your items up here. Okay? Let me help you. See what it is. What is it? A measuring cup? You put it right here with the other things? Okay, what do you got, Grace? I don't know. <laughs> Hold it up and they can yell out what it is. Watering can. A watering can. Okay, we have more items over here. We got here. One more, one more. Okay, I think that's all we got. Open it up. What is it? Toothpaste. Toothpaste. Okay, here we go. So say it out loud. What is this? Okay. Just yell it loudly into the microphone so people at home can hear you too. What we got toilet paper. Yell it in the microphone. Toothpaste. A sponge. Measuring cup, a cup, so a watering can. What do all of these things have in common? What they help you wash your body or something? Okay. Yeah. Is there something in common for all of these things? Think about it. They're related, related to water. They're related to water. Good job. Excellent. That was our puzzle. All right. Have a seat. Have a seat for me so people can see. So they're related to water. Now, is it special water? Is, it, is, is there anything special about the water that we use to brush our teeth or brush our, wash our clothes or wash our dishes? Anything special about it? Not really. Not really. It's the same, right? We are putting water in this boil bowl today. What? It's 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 special because it can change feelings and cold. It can change temperatures, right? So it's ordinary water, no matter what. It's all the same. It's the same type of water. The water. The reason we're talking about water today is because Emma is going to be baptized with water and that water is ordinary plain water just like the same water we brush our teeth with just like the same water that's in our toilets just like the water that we wash dishes it's all the same there's nothing special about the water but there is something very special about the god that we believe works through that water that in that moment embraces Emma to be a part of God's family. We believe that Emma is a part of God's family. Even before we pour this water on her, 
But through that water, she then becomes a part of this Fairhaven community, this church that's part of a bigger church. And so it's very plain, simple water, but the God that works through that water claims her today in her baptism as his child, as a child of God. So we invite you today to stay a little bit longer. Sometimes you go to Sunday school right now, but stick around for the next song and for Emma's baptism so that you are also a part of Emma's family. Whether you're a cousin, a sister, or a child of God, just like Emma. Okay? So let's say, or a baby, <laughs> or big grown ups, or grandparents. We're all children of God. And today we're reminded of that when Emma gets baptized. So let's say a quick prayer and then we'll go back to our seats for the hymn and then we'll, we'll join together in Emma's baptism. Does that sound good? Okay. Thanks for helping me with the, the gifts. Would anybody like to say a prayer for us this morning? I'll see. Dear God, thank you for claiming us as your children, no matter who we are, how young or how old we are, for loving us and extending your love and grace to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. forward at this time. Emma, if you'll bring your parents up and your sister, <laughs> it's time for your baptism. And I know you've all waited a little extra time for this. <laughs> so it is good to see you and welcome and welcome to you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church.
We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. So on behalf of the, of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you do, please answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture these children, both Susanna and Emma? in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves to profess their faith openly and to lead a Christian life. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in pro professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now, Susanna, would you like to help pour the water for your sister's baptism? And I, I will hand this to you. There you go. And if you'll pour that in the bowl that's there. Perfect. Thank you for your help. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations, declare his work to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness through her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. 
All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Emma, are, will you come to me? Or are you gonna stay? Or are you gonna stay with your daddy? Oh, you think I'm all right? Yes. <laughs> is, is it okay if I put some water on your forehead? Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Emma Sophia. You are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Emma, may the Spirit of God work within you. May your heart be warmed for Christ. May your life uh, grow in grace and in knowledge of him so that you may become a faithful disciple of his all your life. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us welcome the newest well, she's always been a member of the household of God, but the newest recognized member of the household of God. So there is Sunday school for those children who would like to attend, and it is just down the hall, right down here. <clears throat> Gracious, you, gracious God, you accept us just as we are. You welcome us into a lifelong embrace of love and grace, offering us forgiveness and mercy and new life. Oh. Help us, O oh God, to walk with you in faith each and every day. 
in humility, in grace, and in love. And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our Lord, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. So two people came to the church to pray. The first one was the kind of committed leader that every church needs to have in its membership. She chaired the unified board. She sang in the choir. She leads a significant ministry in the community. She serves on a conference team, and she even preaches occasionally. She strives each and every day to live after the example of Christ. She came to offer her prayer. She said, oh God, thank you for the blessings of my life. I am a big contributor to the church. I study the Bible each and every day. I attend almost all the services at church. And I guide people on their faith journey. And God, thank you that I am not like that lazy homeless addict over there. The second person who came to pray was someone who is often ignored and unseen by most people in the community. He lived in a tent on the outskirts of town. He would beg on the street corner or at the shopping center for a couple of pennies, a couple of dollars. And then he would use that money to buy alcohol or a bit of crack, spend most of his time drunk or high. He knew his faults, but he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So perhaps this is a 21st century version of the way Jesus would have told that parable. I don't know. I tried to create some, like Jesus did, I tried to create some kind of caricatures of individual followers, individual people who would come to pray. It's not a perfect uh, one for one because the tax collector in the first century would have been seen as a traitor to his own people as he colluded with Rome, the enemy. But in our parable, the church leader knew that she was good and righteous, and faithful in many ways, yet there was one thing missing. She had contempt for another human being. Bishop William Willimon writes, sometimes the look what a good person I am is also accompanied by look at all those sinful losers. In comparison, the homeless addict knew his faults and sought forgiveness. And that's the first step toward reconciliation, to come before God and to open ourselves to the healing, merciful presence of our Lord. But he didn't make any promise of restitution for the money that he took from people to buy drugs. He didn't say, I repent of my sin, that I'm going to change my behavior in the days going forward. He just offered, he just said, God have mercy on me. As I said, that's a great starting point. But a parable like this forces us to take a look at ourselves, at our own behaviors, our own attitudes, our own hearts. We strive here, I, I think that everybody in this room strives to be a faithful follower of Christ. And I dare say that many here are strong leaders in this congregation. You give up your time and talents and treasures to do ministry in the 21st century. And we are grateful for that. And we all need to do that. But you know, and perhaps you even go above and beyond what might be expected of you as a faithful person. But if we're honest with ourselves, and if we're honest with God, there are times when we've got blinders on. 
we fail to recognize our own faults or we fail to see the virtues of the person on the other side of the room. Many of us might be really convinced about our own theological or our own political positions. And we say that they're the correct ones and they're the only correct ones. And that person over there is just wrong. And we try to shield ourselves from an alternative point of view because there's nothing redeemable about that. Or maybe we know that we've worked really hard to build a lifestyle and to build a comfortable life for ourselves, and it's good. But we take a look at the people who are struggling to get ahead, and the first thought that hits our mind is they're not working hard enough, and it's their fault. We may not exactly pray it in our words, but our attitudes and our behaviors betray us. Thank God I'm not like that person over there. Catherine Schifferdecker tells of her son and his friends. And they're young adults, late 20s, early 30s. She says he, had, he and his friends have cancel lists. That if there's one member of their group that says or does something that's disagreeable to another member, they're put on that cancel list for a period of time, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes forever, and they're essentially shunned. They're not invited to participate in activities. They're not even acknowledged on their social media posts. That may be the worst punishment of all. She goes on to write, she says, it's, dis it's disturbing that this practice exists at all as it sets up a dynamic of fear and self-righteousness. God, thank you that I'm not like that other person over there. She continues in her writing to say that we should be humble enough to be honest with ourselves, to look at our hearts to look at our minds, to look at the way we live our lives. She recalls a sign that was hanging on the wall behind a, a bar. It simply said, you might be wrong. That's a truth we all need to consider, to have the humility to admit that it's just possible we could be wrong even a little bit. So if we're able to admit that, it gives us the courage to stand up against the mob mentality of our particular identity group. We can notice that there's that person on the other side, on the right or the left. They might have a point for us to consider and think about, and it might at least nuance our own thinking. We also have those days when we come to pray and we stand before God in total humility and we seek God's mercy, like that homeless man or the tax collector in Jesus' parable. We come before God and we acknowledge every sin and fault and struggle we have ever faced. And that we are at the end of our rope physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And we open ourselves up to the grace and mercy of God and simply say, have mercy on me, God, for I am a sinner. We come relying on God's forgiveness for a new beginning. And then by the power of the Spirit, we experience that forgiveness deep in our heart and deep in our soul. But sometimes, again, if we're honest with ourselves, we come confessing our sin without the intention to change, without the intention to repent and go in a new direction. We won't change our attitude. We won't change our behaviors. We won't change the way we think. We'll neglect to let the Spirit of God do the work of transformation in our lives. As the theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer would write, that's cheap grace. To take the grace of God and 
then continue to live our lives as if we've never experienced it. There are also other times where we think we've sunk so completely in sin that we aren't redeemable. God can't love me that much. God can't love me enough to forgive the sin that I've done. I am totally unworthy. And that statement of unworthiness is true. None of us are worthy. But at the very heart of the Christian message, its very core is a message of love, a message of forgiveness, that Jesus came to save sinners all of us, the prideful ones, the hateful ones, the ones who hold others in contempt, the angry ones, and all of those who strive to live faithfully each and every day, but fall short in some small measure or some spectacular unethical moment. God loves us as we are, just as I am without one plea. God loves us as we are. Jesus loves us as we are. And in grace offers us forgiveness and mercy and transformation and new life. It's part of the message of Emma's baptism today. That in grace, she is offered that forgiveness. But as we stand here, we remember and recognize that we too are baptized children of God, and that in that relationship with God, we too are forgiven, accepted just as we are, but loved too much to let us stay the way we are. So we come to pray. We come to pray in this space. We pray with our fellow sojourners in faith. Some days we come prideful, prideful that we've lived out our faith really well serving God and our neighbor. Other days we come in despair, despair that we can't act in love or do any good in the world. But rather than stand apart from one another and let our pious hearts keep us distanced from one another, can we not stand and pray together? Acknowledging that we're all people in need of grace. If we can open our hearts in that way, we open ourselves to the love of God so that we might be honest about our own journey. That we might find ourselves humbled when we need to be humbled or comforted in those moments when we are in despair and forgiven when we need mercy and lifted up when we have fallen down and transformed day by day into the likeness of Christ, our Savior. Two people, or a hundred people, came to pray. Let us pray, first in silence, and then together. As the deer pants for the streams of water, so our souls long after you. Speak deeply to us, O oh God, and help us to walk life's journey with you so that we might know forgiveness, transformation, new life, and might cherish your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
It is a time in our service when we prepare to make offering. We'll ask the ushers to please come forward. We give praise for those here in the sanctuary for their time and their gifts and for those at home.
Join me in our prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we give you these gifts as symbols of our lives. Receive them with love, bless them with grace, and use them according to your will. You have poured your Holy Spirit into us. Now pour us out into the world as the embodiment of your love.